So suppose you want to show that if you have the premise John will either go to the party or stay home, you want to show that John will have a great evening follows. Uh, in order to show this, you need to show both that if John goes to the party, he will have a great time, and if he stays home, he will also have a great time. The reason that you need to show that John will have a great evening or great time follows from whichever choice John makes is because if John will have a great time, great time or great evening, only if, that is, just in the case that he goes to the party and not if he stays uh, home, then it's possible for the premise John will either go to the party or stay home to be true and the conclusion John will have a great evening to be false. This is possible because John might just plan to stay home or stay home, in which case the premise John will either go to the party or stay home is true since he is staying home. But the conclusion John will have a great time or a great evening is false. It would only be the case if he went to the party and had a great time and saw all of his friends that he had uh, that he would have this great evening. Because of this, when working with disjunction elimination or disjunctions in general, what we need to we need to have a couple things in place. The first is that we need a disjunction P or R or a disjunction of any form, basically a proposition where the main operator is the wedge or sign for disjunction. And what you need to do is show that given an assumption of either of the disjuncts, uh, the same or identical proposition follows in a subproof. That is, given a proposition P or R on the assumption that P, uh, that Z will follow. And likewise, on the assumption that R, Z also follows. So given that we can, we have a disjunction P or R, and we make an, a sub, an assumption, and in that subproof Z follows, and um, additionally we assume R, and show that Z follows, then we can uh, derive Z from the disjunction P or R. Now to provide an illustration of this, we'll look at, a, uh, we'll walk through one example. So in this case, we have uh, premise one, which is a disjunction, P or L. We'll indicate that as a premise. We have a conditional L, S, and T, which is also a premise. And we have the premise P, if P, then S and T. And what we want to show is that T follows. Now. Just using the intellem rules, the uh, introduction and elimination rules, as well as reiteration, there's not a straightforward way to solve this proof without the use of disjunction elimination. So what disjunction elimination asks us to first do is to assume the one of the disjuncts and then show that uh, a particular proposition follows. So in this case we're going to assume the left disjunct of this disjunction up here and we're going to assume P. And now we want to show that uh, later on in the proof we'll assume the right disjunct L and we'll try to derive the same proposition in this subproof. But first we have to kind of pick a proposition we want to try to derive in this subproof. And so uh, one good kind of goal to get is just to get T because this is our conclusion. So we assume P at line four and then we can make use of conditional elimination on line, using lines four and three. And this will give us S and T. And so let me just quickly remove the color right here. And so this is lines three and four using conditional elimination. Next, we'll use conjunction elimination on line five to give us uh, 
simply T. Now that we have the we've assumed the left disjunct and have derived the T, we'll go ahead and try to assume the right disjunct L and work towards also deriving T. So if we have L at line seven, line two is a conditional, we can derive S and T. And this is by two, seven conditional elimination. And then at line nine, we can use conjunction elimination. Uh, we're deriving the T from line eight. So now if you take a look at the proof thus far, what we've done is assumed P at line four, which is the left disjunct, and then we derive T. Then we assumed L, the right disjunct from, of the conjunct, or the disjunction at line one, and also derive T. So we derive the same proposition at both, in both of the subproofs. Now given if P, T follows, and if L, T follows, then we can write T at line 10. And what we've done is shown that from a, the disjunction at line one and two subproofs, four through six and seven through nine, that T follows. So this is the procedure for using disjunction elimination.